Well, hey folks, welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. Finally got a little time on my hands to take care of some things around my place. Winter is coming on, so I thought I'd better get some of these projects done uh, before it gets too late and too cold for me to work on them. One of the projects that I've really needed to do has been uh, to replace the panels that are on my porch uh, with some panels that are down lower, and I'll, I'll show you what I got here. I've always kept my panels up on the uh, porch up there, as you can see. And uh, that's worked fine, uh, but I'm not as young as I used to be, and so it's been a little bit difficult for me to get out on that porch, shinny through that window, and push the snow off, and also do maintenance on those panels. Plus, when I put those panels there, this tree was only about half that size. And now that tree is casting some shade uh, on my panels up there, so I don't like that. And uh, I don't want to take the tree out. I don't want to cut it down because I like the tree right there, and it provides some shade in the summer, it provides some shade for the cabin. So. I'm going to be taking those panels off the roof, but before I did that, I went ahead and hooked up my new system, which is this system here, uh, which is four 100-watt Renogi solar panels. Uh, these are monocrystalline panels, but they're uh, a very good panel, uh, and uh, I like the, the price on them was mostly what attracted me to them. I got these for a good price, right around a dollar a watt uh, for these solar panels with free shipping, so that was a good deal. And uh, I just made my own mounts here. As you can see, I've got some cinder blocks, and I've got a treated uh, two by four through them, and then I've, I've just wired the bottom of my panels right to that two by four. And then I've got some rebar I'm gonna be putting in here along these blocks just to hold them down. And then I used my old horse hitch post. I've got two of them, one on each side of my front yard there. So I just decided to use one of them as the back. And uh, again, I used some high tensile, uh, actually electric fence wires, what I used to attach these. And they're just attached to the top of that, down at the bottom. <coughs> excuse me. They're attached to the cinder blocks in that post down there. Good solid mount. They're not going to go anywhere. And then this is hooked up in a 12 volt system. Just to to explain here, uh, each of the panels is 12 volts, and I want to maintain 12 volt system running into my house. And so these are hooked in parallel. What I had to do is I just spliced some wires together. Positive wire from each panel all run together, and then run into a common wire over there. Negative wires all run together and run into a common wire over there. That's a 12 volt parallel attachment, okay? And then each of the uh, splices is just covered up in some really good exterior uh, electrical tape. That's all, okay? It doesn't have to be real expensive. You don't have to use fancy connectors and stuff like that. The only connectors I use is I reuse the MC4 connectors that come on these panels. As you can see here, I, use, I reuse the MC4 connectors uh, and just made a, a connection to my 8 gauge wire and you want to use at least 8 gauge heavy wire. Uh, DC power uh, needs a thicker wire than AC power does because if you use a real thin wire it will actually, it's like water through a hose, it's like kinking the hose and you won't get as much power through and you can actually build up heat in the wire if you use too light of a gauge of wire. So you want to use at least 8 gauge wire and you can see I've got them running through PVC. Now I'm going to be burying this PVC, but I left it up here just so I could show you. As you can see, it runs down there through that PVC conduit, and then it runs through that PVC over to the back of my cabin, and I'll show you where it goes in there. Now this, this PVC will be buried uh, eight inches down into the ground. That just protects the wire, so uh, when I'm uh, running the lawnmower or walking over it, I'm not going to be damaging the wires. So that's really all there is to the basic uh, setup here. Four 100 watt Renogi panels uh, running parallel, 12 volt, through to a common wire, 8 gauge wire, and then uh, just ran through some conduit that'll go underneath the ground, and that'll run into the system. Now, instead of running this over to my shed like my old system, I'm running this into the cabin, and uh, I'm going to be using some AGM batteries, which I'll show you inside. Uh, they're, they're sealed batteries and so they can be stored right inside the cabin. Now what that does is that allows me to keep the batteries a lot warmer. Warm batteries hold a lot more power. One of the problems I've had here in winter is even though they've been stored in the shed over there, in winter time the cold just really zaps the hell out of the batteries so you lose a lot of power. So what I'm doing is I'm able to use less batteries by storing them inside uh, because I don't have to uh, worry about them losing power in winter because they'll be kept warm inside the cabin. So I'll show you that hookup inside. So that's my new solar panel system right there to replace the one that's up on the roof. And I'm going to be taking those old panels down. I've got some other 
purposes for them. They're going to be going on my camper over there for a remote system. Uh, when I go up uh, teaching survival classes and stuff like that in the summer, then I'll be taking those up there with me on my camper. Those are some of those panels are about 10 years old, so they're they're still working just fine. But over time, solar panels do tend to lose some of their ability to produce power. So those older panels are going to be retired. Uh, to another purpose. These brand new panels now will take over their place. This will only be a 400 watt system. That's all I need for my cabin. So I'll show you how that's hooked up on the inside. Okay, so you can see that PVC pipe runs around here, runs around to the back of the cabin. Now I'm going to be building an addition off the back of this cabin. So this will all be covered up by the addition. So I just left it sitting on, on top of the ground for right now. So you can see it just runs through. My wires run through that. Then it comes up through a few elbows and just runs through a hole into the back of the cabin. Okay, so that's where my wiring comes through. Uh, eight gauge wiring comes through running just DC power into the cabin. So now I'll show you the batteries and system inside. Okay, so uh, here's my power controller. My DC wires run up into the power controller and this is an MPPT 30 amp power controller. This is just one of those Chinese made ones. Uh, I wanted to test it because it's not really expensive. It was about $75 made by ROHS. Uh, I got it on eBay for about 70 bucks. Now that's a MPPT, which means it uh, gets a little bit more power out of the panels on cloudy days. And I've noticed that this comes on and starts kicking in power real early. Just as soon as the sun comes up, it starts putting out power. And even on cloudy days, it still collects a lot of power. If you don't use an MPPT, if you use a PWM controller, uh, then a lot of times they don't do as well on cloudy days and they don't get as much sunlight out of it. With one of these MPPT controllers, you'll average anywhere from 15 to 30 percent more power. So that's why I'm using that. And this is just a real simple controller. It just has some blinking lights that tells me what's going on. It's blinking because it tells me it's in MPPT mode. And the uh, orange light over there is going to be turning green real soon because my batteries are just about full. And it just has another load battery there, or load light that tells me that there's a load on. Now, I like this controller because uh, if you look down here on these wires, it has a connection that goes directly to DC control, okay? And what that does is that runs my light up here and also runs my water pump. So instead of running wires directly off of my battery, I can run them directly off the controller now, and it gets a steady stream of 12 volt, which I've noticed is a lot better than just running it directly off the battery. And so that runs my uh, DC lights like this, and then I've got another wire that runs over to my water pump uh, for running my shower and my sink. So that's the controller, and then there's some wires, 8-gauge wires again, running down here to my battery bank. And there's Right now I just have two batteries on this. Uh, I will probably add a third and maybe a fourth battery, but I, I right now I'm running everything that I need in the cabin. Uh, this runs my laptop, this runs my ARB fridge, which I'll show you here in a minute. Uh, this runs all my lights, recharges my gadgets, just off two 12-volt batteries. Now, these are AGM sealed batteries. These are made by VMAX Tank. I got them off of Amazon. Uh, they're not cheap. These are about $250 a piece, okay, with free shipping. Now, you can get local batteries. You may get uh, DECA or Trojan uh, AGM sealed batteries, but if you're going to be storing the batteries inside, you want to use sealed batteries, and that's what I'm using here. Uh, eight, I've got 8-gauge wire. As you can see there, I've got 8-gauge wire running to the batteries. And right now, I've just got my AC running because I've just barely hooked this up. I've got my AC running just off of a 175-watt inverter. This inverter doesn't have a fan uh, because it uses less power without a fan on it. And that's all I'm using for all the power in my cabin right now is just a 175-watt uh, inverter running off these. And I've just got the clamps on them. I don't recommend you use the clamps for these inverters. Uh, because they will tend to corrode and you don't get as good a connection. So I will be hardwiring this inverter into it. But uh, that's all I've got right now. And that will run my laptop and my ARB fridge at the same time. And those are the only two things I have that run off of AC right now other than a charger. So I really don't need a very large inverter. And this inverter uses a lot less power than one with a fan. So that's why I'm using it. And uh, I've had no problems with two batteries keeping them full. They're, they're charged back up usually within about four or five hours. They're completely charged back up with those 400 watt panels. And that runs my fridge all day long. I usually shut the fridge off about five o'clock and I'll show you the fridge here. Okay, so the fridge that I'm using right now is made by ARB uh, and they're made for uh, four wheel uh, expeditions, camping and stuff like that. And that's what I am using. 
And uh, this bridge, uh, I really like this. This only uses about one amp of power, uh, actually less than one amp of power when it's running. So it's, it really uses a lot less uh, power than a fridge like that one right there, which uses about seven amps of power. Okay. It doesn't have as much storage space, but where it's just me most of the time here, I really don't need a lot of, of cold food storage space. And so this, this will hold, uh, I think it says five uh, 12 packs of soda. I don't know about that, but it'll hold, it holds all my food. As you can see, I've got it full up with uh, TV dinners and hot dogs and all kinds of stuff in there. It does hold a lot. It's got two baskets in it. That's all the room that I need really for cold food storage. And I do have a chest freezer that I'm going to be hooking up on a separate system eventually. But that's my fridge. And uh, that and my laptop are the only two things that run all the time off of AC, off of that inverter back there. So I really don't need a whole lot of power for my cabin. That little 400 watt system takes care of it just fine. Okay, so that's my system, folks. And that's what I've been working on the last few days. I still need to, to get my uh, AC plugs and wires run where they're supposed to be. Uh, but other than that, that's, that's about all the system that I use, and that's what I've been uh, doing the last few days in my cabin. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please do come by my uh, website, simpsolarhomesteading.com. i uh, got some uh, new information on there. Always got new cabin plans that I'm coming up with, new designs, things like that. So if you want to see some, some interesting designs, come on by there. And I've got lots and lots of videos, over 100 videos on my channel now. Uh, so if you want uh, information on any of the systems, uh, water, septic, anything that I do around the cabin, or if you want to see my remodel, because I got the cabin all nice and remodeled in here. See this? Got the cabin all nice and remodeled. Uh, put in new counters, new cabinets, and everything like that. I've got all kinds of videos on my channel uh, that will show you all of that, what I've been doing and working on on the cabin this year and, and over the last couple of years. So come on by my channel and subscribe uh, so you're notified when I do new videos and go by my website simpsolarhomesteading.com take a look at that thanks everybody for joining me today and have a great day